Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you this morning, today, for joining us here at First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. I'm excited to have all of you join us wherever you are in the world. I always give God praise for that. Thank you for tuning in. I pray that God ministers to you. I'm going to be ministering. I'm actually going to be teaching like a Bible study today, looking at various passages to challenge us in our responsibilities and the call of God upon his heart to us that we have a burden and a responsibility to share the truth of his word with other people, to share the love of Jesus Christ with the world. I believe it's going to be a challenge to you and help you know what it is God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Oh God, we bless your name. We worship your name. We glorify your name. We thank you. Thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. Thank you for keeping us all week long and bringing us back here today. Father, we pray for one another and intercede for one another and pray for our brother or sister and call their name out before you. And lay their name at your altar and ask you to work a miracle in their life in the name of Jesus. Father, we acknowledge and confess our sins and confess our transgressions. And we pray in the name of the Lord that you would have mercy upon us and pray that you would work miracles God in the name of Jesus and solve problems and bring deliverance in the name of the Lord I'm praying for somebody to be saved today somebody to be delivered somebody to be restored somebody to be encouraged we're praying that when it's all said and done in the name of Jesus we get all of the glory and the honor that he would be exalted and he would be made real in somebody's life father we pray a hedge around this place that you bind every demonic and distracting spirit we pray for our brothers and sisters who join us through the internet around the world. We pray for them today that your power would transcend location and accomplish in their lives what you desire. Now, God, anoint this word and this message. Change our hearts and our minds. Influence us, God, to be in the center of your will. We pray this in the name of the Lord Jesus, and we give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, you can be seated. I'm coming down on the floor. So I can get in your face. So today is a Bible study day topical message a lot of verses take good notes because I want to talk to you about something that the church has become lackadaisical about evangelism yeah I knew y'all wouldn't be excited about it if I had said prosperity I'd say ooh if I had said favor but you ought to get excited about evangelism I know you're not. It's okay. Don't. It's all right. Stay. Keep it quiet. It's all right. Uh, it's a burden on my heart. I can't shake it. I keep trying to go on to the next thing. I've been teaching about it in Bible study, but since y'all don't come to Bible study, I'm bringing it to you. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, "You weren't at Bible study, so I bought it." The pastor bringing it to you. <laughs> so the people who've been to Bible study already heard me talk about this already. See, y'all heard the five people who said that? They said, sure did. <laughs> but the majority of our church has not. And the reality is um, the heart of God is burdened that the church has lost its passion to win the loss to Jesus. And lost people, unsaved people, unchurched people are going to hell. And y'all are partying with them and talking with them and watching movies with them and never say anything about the Lord Jesus to them. I was so proud of this young lady right here who, uh, when her schoolmates didn't show up at the flagpole, she went and got them. That's what I'm talking about right there. What school do you go to? What school? You go to Flowers? You know they beat Suitland this weekend in the football game. Yeah, they beat Suitland. So um, I'm proud of you. And I, I'm so grateful that you took a leadership role 
as a young lady and went and recruited from Friday. Stand up, look at all these heathens who won't do what you did. Look around, look around, look around. Thank you very much. I want you to see. I want you to pray for them. Pray for them. Because this is our flagpole right here. Amen. Y'all don't like this kind of preaching, do y'all? I ain't started. So, uh, yesterday, I did something I hate to do. But I pushed past my resistance and did it. It's something I didn't want to do, but I did it. I got invited to do it, and I did it. I didn't want to, but I did it. I went and did a Bible study for the Dallas Cowboys. tough. It was tough. Didn't want to do it. My flesh said don't do it. But I had a charge to keep and a God to glorify. You know I wanted to. My flesh said tell them they're going to lose tomorrow. That's what my flesh said. But I didn't, I didn't let my flesh talk. I stuck to the, told them the truth. And know what I told them? How to get their prayers answered. I didn't want to teach that lesson to them. But that's what God told me to do. I had to obey God. You, know, you gotta obey God. Sometimes you gotta do something you don't feel like doing. I had to do it. I didn't want to. Everybody was in there. Ezekiel, what's his name? Zeke was in there. And Dak was in there. There are 42 of them up in there. 42 or 53 of them were in there. I'm saying, Lord, why? I got to have this assignment. Why are there so many Dallas Cowboy fans here? <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> In the same way I had to push past my flesh. Yes, sir. Come on. To give truth to a team I despise. Hold on, let me back up. It's not really the team I despise. It's the owner. <laughs> Y'all forgive me, I'm sorry. Let me, I'm, I'm getting off track here, but I was a Dallas Cowboy fan growing up. Love the Cowboys. Then the new owner fired the legendary Tom, Tom Landry. And the way he did it, I just cannot cheer for the team while he's still on the team. I can't do it. Yeah, it's okay. Pray for me. Pray for me. Y'all know I had to take the number one Dallas fan. There he is. Ain't supposed to do this. He up there taking pictures with Dak Prescott. <laughs> You're not supposed to ask him for pictures when you go in there, girl. I got seven points for you real quick, and I, since I'm on a limited time frame, I got 20 minutes, I'm gonna put two minutes on each one, and I need you to get it, okay? I need you to get it, and I'm, I'm gonna give you the verse, put the verse up there, and uh, you'll see it, but take good notes. Here's number one. Number one, here's point one. We need to pray for people to be passionate about sharing the gospel. 
We need to pray. Pray for laborers. That's my first point. Pray for people to be passionate about the gospel. We got people that are passionate about a lot of things. You passionate about your multi-level, what do they call it when you sell stuff and get people under, under you to sell stuff and market? What's it called? Multi-level marketing. Yeah, you're telling everybody about your market. What, what is it again? Network marketing. Network marketing. You must be one of them. No! I, to, I, I got a bunch of friends. You got a bunch of friends and always talking to you about it. Hey, man, turn, turn around, trying to get you to buy something. Exactly. Then trying to recruit you in it to, to, to also sell. And know I got to be in Bible study. And know you got to be, and they trying to get you on Tuesday night exactly. when you're in Bible study. Come to their session. Right? What if Christians were that aggressive with sharing the gospel with people who are unsaved? And y'all know I'm the, I'm the pastor of the First Baptist Church of Canaan, so people always calling me trying to get me in something. Always trying to get me to bring something to the peoples. And I just got to the point when they say, Pastor, I need to meet with you. I ask people now, let me tell you something. When people ask me for a meeting, I ask them, what do you want to meet about? You cannot have a meeting with me and don't tell me what you want to meet about because I'm tired of going into meetings and you come breaking out some multi-level marketing thing to me. I ain't doing it. It's a waste of my time. But what if Christians were that aggressive with praying? When the last time you prayed for somebody that you know needed to be saved? I asked y'all a question, y'all ain't answered. When the last time you brought somebody to church? Y'all not answering me. Y'all got people who are going to hell. Don't know Jesus. Jacked up, messed up lives. We need to pray for God to raise up laborers. Go, go to the scripture. Go to Mark. Go, I'm sorry. Go to Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. Let's see that real quick. Matthew chapter 9, verse 37 and 38. Then he said to his disciples, this is Jesus talking, the harvest truly is plentiful. How many of y'all know the harvest is plentiful? They plenty unsaved people. Plenty. 80, 83% of Americans don't go to nobody's church and have no walk with God. 83%. 17% of Americans are engaged in the work of the church. 17%. We're going in the wrong direction. He says the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. That's verse 37. Verse 38 says, verse 38 says, therefore pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his vineyard into his harvest. We need to pray that God raises up and puts passion in people's lives to want to share the gospel with people who are lost. Y'all got that? Here's number two. Let me roll on. Number two. Christ has called you, somebody say you, you. to be a fisher of men. He's called you. You. Somebody say you. You, you. Now, my father used to be a fisherman. Father, matter of fact, he owned a boat. Uh, look at Matthew 4.19. Go to that real quick. My father owned a boat. Here's what Jesus said to the disciples. He said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. And here's what I learned about fishing. I hated fishing. I would go with my father. That's why I only went with, only went with him a few times because I didn't like fishing. I liked hanging out with him, but I didn't like fishing. I didn't like putting the worm on the hook. The worm's still squirming, still alive. Yucko. But that's what, they, what you had to do, and I hated it. And then they, they, they studied where the fish would be, what level the fish would more likely be at, how deep in the water they would be, what type of water they would be at, what kind of fish would be in this kind of area, what kind of fish would be in this kind of water. 
you know, this is what they spend all their time studying and researching, and that's what fishermen do. And God is saying we need to be fishers of men. We need to study and find out where the sin is going to be, what's the best way to reach these sinners. You know what I'm trying to get y'all to do? I'm trying to get you to get out of church, and I'm trying to get you to go in the community and go into the places where unsaved people are and share the gospel with them. I know, I know you're going to take this and go to the club. Oh, come on, who am I talking to? Oh, that's not this service. That's the, y'all going to the cabarets. That's where y'all going. Where's this crowd going, uh, Brother Craig? They're not going to the, to the club. Where do they go? Huh? The lounges. Lounges. <laughs> what happens at the lounges? <laughs> they tell me. They tell you. Okay, go ahead, Brother Craig. They tell me they socialize. They socialize. Okay. All right. But you ain't never been. Oh, I've been. Oh, you have been. <laughs> <laughs> we need to go out to where they are. We, should, we need to go find them and share y'all. Matter of fact, you ain't got to go far. Some of them work on your jobs. And some of them uh, live in your neighborhood. Some of them live in the same house you live in. And you have a burden and a responsibility to share truth with them, to pray for them. Because if they die in that state, they're going to hell. If they're unsaved and they die in an unsaved condition without Jesus in their life, they will spend the rest of eternity in hell. And right. you need to understand, once you die, we can't get you into heaven once you die. Right. Amen. You can't get baptized. You can't get saved. Amen. You, can't, you can't get, under, once you die, you can't get people saved once they die. All right. All right. And so, so God has called you to be a fisherman. Look at your neighbor. Say, he's talking about you. Here's number three, and I'm rolling through this. Number three, you cannot be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16, you can't be ashamed. I love this verse right here. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. When a person believes, the power of the gospel changes their life. You know, the wonderful thing, God doesn't, get, he doesn't make it hard. He doesn't say, you know, you have to pay a lot of money. You got to be baptized. Baptism don't save you. He doesn't say you got to do all this stuff. He says, believe. Somebody say, put your faith in the death of Jesus Christ on the cross and that he rose from the dead. Believe. Believe and repent. Those two things actually go together. You got to be willing to turn away from the way you've been living your life. You got to make those two things go together to give you, to regenerate you. But the key is some of you are afraid to talk to people because you are ashamed. Now, I don't know where y'all are, but I'm, I wanted to be clear. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm proud to be a Christian. I'm, I'm a bold Christian. I'm a courageous Christian. I'm not ashamed, and I'm not afraid, and I want to push you not to be ashamed or afraid to share the gospel. When you have truth and you know somebody is on their way down the road that's going to mess up their life, you've got to have the courage to speak truth to them. If I'm sitting in my house and I look across the street and I see your house on fire and I see the roof burning and I see the second floor burning and I know you in the bottom floor, if I love you, if I care about you, I'm going to do everything I can to run over and holler and scream and say, get out of there, come out of there, your house is on fire, 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 because I care about them. But some of you have never opened your mouth to anybody. You're ashamed of the gospel. You're afraid about what they might say about you. I'm doing the best that I can. Do y'all hear me talking to you today? I'm trying to push you. It's a burden. I can't get this monkey off my back. Our church... Our <laughs> <laughs> not yet baby it's not off yet when the 8 o'clock service is packed and full then it might be off from my back when 
when you got all your family members saved, then it might be off my back. But as long as you're getting up and leaving your children at home, it's on my back. As long as you're going to work, whoo, and you got co-workers that you ain't never opened your mouth to and told them about the love of God, it's on my back. But I'm going to push and preach, and I'm pushing and preaching to tell you, you have a responsibility. Somebody, look at your neighbor, say you. He talking to you. You can't be ashamed. Let's go to number, three, number four. How many did I give y'all? Here's number four. You must do the work of an evangelist, the scripture says. Do the work of an evangelist. Now, this is important. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 5. Do the work. You must do the work. I want you to get this. The scripture says in 2 Timothy 4, verse 5, be you watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. Get that down. Highlight that verse. You do the work of a ministry. You fulfill your ministry. You do the work of an evangelist. See, the problem with the church is we have relegated that assignment to the pastor and the ministers, and we think it's not our role. Listen, it's not my job. It's not my responsibility to make sheep. The shepherd can't make sheep. Sheep make sheep. Shepherd don't mess with the sheep. Ain't supposed to be messing with the sheep. Something wrong with the shepherd messing with the sheep. <laughs> sheep make sheep. Healthy sheep produce sheep. My job is to keep you healthy. Amen. And if you're healthy and growing and spiritual and godly and doing all the right things, you'll make some sheep. Somebody on your row ain't made no sheep. Look up and down and see if you can figure out who it is. Go ahead, look up and down. <laughs> Healthy sheep make sheep. Healthy sheep make sheep. You're spiritually healthy. Somebody, this, let me tell you what I mean by that. If you're a healthy believer, a healthy disciple of Jesus, you will attract unsafe people to you. When they see the joy of the Lord and the peace of God that surpasses understanding over you, when they see the love that you have for other people, they will say, I want what you have. When they see you remaining calm when all hell is broken loose in your life and they know that everything's going backwards but you still calm and you still got joy, they're going to say, how you do that? You can say, Jesus helped me to be able to be like this. When they see you have a joy that's unspeakable, that you, got, you, 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 you come to work joyful every day, and see, you got that joy. They, they want that. We live in a, in a culture and in a world where people are depressed and sad and suicidal. And when they see you got that joy, they want what you have. And your job is to be able to tell them, you can have what I have. My job is to try to keep you healthy. So you be that. All right, y'all got that? So you, you got to do the work of, a, of, of an evangelist. Somebody tell your neighbor, do the work of an evangelist. Start in your own home. Start praying for the people in your household. Here's number, how many did I give y'all? Four? Here's number five. I'm going to read this to you. Go to 2 Corinthians 5, verse 20. Here's what number five is. Go ahead, put it up there. Now then, we, has, we are ambassadors for Christ. Listen to this. We are ambassadors for Christ. I like this. As though God were pleading through us, Amen. we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. Here, here's what that means. That means we are, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back to verse 20. Stick, stick with verse 20. Go back to verse 20. Back up, yeah. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ 
as though God were pleading through us. Here's what that means, that we are God's channel for him to plead to the world through us. He's pleading. God, when God speaks, the way God speaks is through you. God uses your voice to plead to the lost and tell them, you're his instrument, you're his channel, you're his conduit. We are his arms and legs. If the hungry people are going to be fed, we got to do it. If they're going to be helped, we have to do it. If, we're gonna, if they're going to hear the gospel, we have to take it to them. And I love that verse because it says, as though God is pleading through us, God wants to plead his message to lost people through you. Look at your neighbor and say, through you. Look at him on the other side, say through you. through you. So the point is God uses you to plead his cause. God wants to use you. You're the instrument to, be, to make it done. Here's number six, my time is running out. Be prepared to give an answer of your hope. Be prepared, be ready to give an answer for the hope that's in you. That's number six, I think. Is that number six? Somebody say, be prepared. be prepared. You must be prepared to be able to answer. You're part of a church. This is a church that majors on developing people. Y'all don't come to this church every day and we're not preparing you for life. We're teaching you everything we can. We, that's why we got 44 classrooms in this building, 44 in the, mer in the ministry center, because we major on developing people. We ain't here just, we're not entertaining you. I ain't up here who, eh, eh. I'm not up here holding my ear, yeah, won't he do it? <laughs> mm. and Moses stretched out his rod <laughs> and uh, the waters opened up on both sides. You don't hear me. <laughs> not entertaining you at this church we are teaching the word of God to develop I am past the point of trying to get people to like me I don't care whether you like me you don't have to like me I don't need your approval I got hear heaven saying amen preacher on pastor you ain't got to like me. My job is to give you truth, and my job is to prepare you. Now, in Acts 13, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 3.15, I'm sorry, 1 Peter 3.15, I'm going to be late. I'm going over time for a few moments. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Be able to tell them why you believe in God. And that's what we try to do at our churches, prepare you to be able to give an answer for the hope that lies within you. Now, now what, what, for what reason, John Jenkins, do you put your trust in this hope? Why? Uh, in Acts chapter 13, just turn here real quick. Uh, let me tell you, this, tell you this story real quick from Acts 13. Paul and some of his disciples go into a synagogue one Sabbath day. They go into the synagogue one Sabbath day. And they see these visitors. The, 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 the priests see a visitor, and, and the priest says, we have some guests here. Would y'all like to say something? Paul stands up. Y'all know, years ago, we used to ask the guests to say something in church. We stopped that. I'm almost finished. He said, you got, you have seen, and, and then verse, uh, in chapter 13, uh, Paul starts preaching. And he preaches, he preaches. They asked him to say something, he preached a sermon. When he finished preaching, in verse 44 and 45, don't have time to turn there, but just, I'm telling you what it says. 
What he preached was so good, verse 42 through 44, was so good. Listen to this. They asked him, can you come back the next Sabbath and preach the same sermon? I've been preaching a long time. Ain't nobody ever asked me to preach the same sermon. And then verse 44 says, the next week, the next Sabbath, listen to this, almost the whole city came. Can you imagine? Almost everybody in the city came the next Sabbath to hear the word of God. What did he say that made them come back? It boils down to verse 38 and 39. Here's, and this is what, why we have hope. This is what our hope is. Here's, where, here's the reason for the hope that lies within us. Go ahead, right there. Put it up on the screen. Uh, therefore, listen to this. Let it be known to you, brethren, that through this man is preached to you the forgiveness of sin. Stick a pen right there. Here's what everybody needs. I don't care where you're from, where you live. Everybody needs forgiveness of sins. Look at that person sitting next to you. Look at them eyeball to eyeball. They done done something they ain't had no business doing. Go ahead, look at her. Look at her. <laughs> He's such a rascal. Everybody in here do something. Everybody in here has missed the mark. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark. And we have a response, uh, the ability to tell people, though your sins be as scarlet, come, they can be whiter than snow. This is the reason for the hope, because we have failed, and, if, and we have sinned, and we've missed the mark, and we've done some things, and said some things, and thought some things, and went some places, and had some behaviors, and had some actions, and had some stuff in our heart that wasn't right. We have done, we have sinned and fallen short, but the great news is, we can be forgiven, and you can be forgiven. This is why I have hope. I need my sins forgiven. That's why Jesus is important. He wipes our slate clean. And guess what? Put the next verse up there. Not only does he forgive us, go ahead to the next verse, verse 39. Put verse 39 on the screen. Therefore, and by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. I feel a shout right there. That means when God looks at you, it's just as if you never did it. Justified. When God looks at you, it's just as if you didn't sin. Y'all know people don't treat you like that. They remember what you did. They recall your past. They bring up your failures. But the Jesus we serve wipes the slate clean. Matter of fact, the scripture says, he, he says, your sins and iniquities I will remember no more. That's why we have a hope. That's where our, that's where our hope rests, and that promise from God. That's such a great news. I've been to plenty of churches. Let me tell you something. I, you know, I, my life is church. Every day, my life is church. I've been involved in church since I was a teenager. I've been into a lot of churches. I've been into a lot of churches where I just went in just to scope it out. And I've been in churches and sat down, sat through the service, service over left, and nobody never said anything to me. That's right. Didn't say hello, didn't say praise the Lord, thank you for coming. Didn't say come sit down next to me, didn't say nothing. I went in, sat down, sat through the service, service over, got up left, nobody said nothing to me. I've been to a lot of church, that's why we're gonna be a warm, welcoming church. Not we're going to be, we are. We love people. Amen. And we are, we, 
I've been to churches where they beat people over here and tell them what they ain't supposed to do. You ain't supposed to do this. You ain't supposed to do that. You ain't supposed to go here. You ain't supposed to go there. You ain't supposed to wear makeup. You ain't, woman ain't supposed to wear pants. You supposed to have a hat on your head. They, they just beat you up, beat you up, beat you up. All of the laws, do's and don'ts. That ain't never changed nobody. First thing people need to know, before you beat them over the head with what they're doing wrong, they need to be forgiven. Yeah. They need to know they're forgiven. Don't get into debates with people about where did Cain's wife come from. I don't know where she came from. I wasn't there. It don't matter where she came from. Obviously, if we believe the Bible, he must have married his sister. Yeah. If, there's Abraham, if it's Adam and Eve, then they had Cain and Abel, and then he found a wife. If we believe that Adam and Eve were the first people on the planet, then he must have married his sister. Common sense, duh. Hello. <laughs> How'd I get off on that? I don't know how I got off. <laughs> okay. Let me close with this. Go to the next point. Last point. Set point seven. I'm finished. I'm way over time. I gotta hurry up. You must, we, you must go to the hedges and highways and compel. And jot down Luke 15, verses 15 through 24. I'm not, I'm not gonna have time to read that passage, but let me just tell you what it says. A man threw a party, sent his servants out to get the people who had been invited to the party to come, and they all had excuses why they couldn't come to the party. Luke 15. Then he said to his, then he said to his servants, since the people I invited won't come, he said, go out to the hedges and the highways and find people and bring them in. That's what this young lady did. The people who were invited didn't come. So she went into the hedges and the highways, the cafeteria and the hallways. I'm so proud of you. Why can't we have more of you in this church? And she went and got them. And that's what that verse says. You got to go and get them to come. Go into the hedges and the highways. Listen, let me be clear. I'm closing. I'm not asking you to go and get church people. I'm not after getting people from one church to come and join this church. I'm talking about people who don't go to church. I'm talking about people who don't know Jesus. I'm talking about people who are lost in their sin. You know them. They're the drunks and the people get high and... And some of them don't get drunk nor get high. Some of them just sinners. They don't know the Lord. They, they, some of them are, are good people. But they don't know Jesus. We are commanded by God to go and compel them to come. My push to you today is we got to, we, we should have hundreds of guests in this church every weekend. Amen, Pastor. All right, thank you. And by the way, it ain't even about them coming to this church. We're a kingdom minded. It don't have to come to this church. Just get them saved and help them go to some church. Any church. It's about the kingdom. Now, I believe there's some people here today that need Jesus. I believe there's some people here today that need forgiveness of your sin. Where, you, where is you? Where you at? Come on down here and join me real quick. Just get on up and come down here. Somebody who's backslidden, you need to rededicate. Just get up and come on down here. Y'all ain't got to stand. Just get up and come on down here. Or maybe you're unsure. You need assurance. Maybe you don't know whether you're saved or not. You can have assurance. Just get on up and come down here right now. While the blood's running warm in your veins, you have the activities of your limbs. God spared your life. You, you, could, be, you could be going to hell, but God's been merciful to you, and he's given you another chance. Get up out of your seat and come down here right now while the blood is running warm in your veins and say yes to the Lord come now come come we're gonna shout give God the praise give God the glory we're gonna give him a holler and a shout and a praise come right now come
the Lord, give the Lord a shout for these souls right here. The person behind you is a counselor. They're going to take you in the back, talk with you, find out why you came, and they're going to minister to you. Amen. Somebody else coming? Come on. Let me pray for you. Father, thank you for these souls today. I pray that their faith would be extended to you. They have a heart of repentance. And I pray, almighty God, that they would be filled with your power, forgiven of their sins, planted in your vineyard, and used for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.